Hey nerds, welcome to Jared Bear Reacts. Listen, it's already that time again, and it's terrifying to even say that, but this is the season four recap. The recap to season four is already here. No reaction day other than the other one. No episode reaction, basically. This is how we wrap up and kind of sort of go over, review, and have our mini uh, award ceremony for The Vampire Diaries season four. Now, going into this, a lot of you go... We're saying that season four was your uh, favorite season. I got a lot of season fours, season sixes, uh, some season threes. There's a couple season twos salt bait in there. Now I'm starting to see some people say season, uh, I'm getting a lot of season fives going into it now. That's the next season. So with that out of the way, um, I'm going to go ahead and dive into this. I actually helped myself tremendously this time around in order to give the best possible version of this maybe it's not the best possible we could always do better but nonetheless if you guys are new here feel free to subscribe for daily content if there's a day there is a reaction and links are in the description box now seasons one through four in its entirety of the vampire diaries is on patreon uncut as well as wandavision uh falcon and winter soldier and all the good stuff so listen what i did was after each episode i took many notes right I typed out many notes. I kept track of the people who died. I was just winging it prior to this. I was like, I think this is right. I'm just going to say it. So, as always, we do have our recap, which means you do get forehead time. I should make that a... Uh, look at this little strand of hair right here. What are you doing, bro? Like, get up there. You're, be with your friends. I need, a, I need a scene for that. Forehead time. Regardless, hey, let's just get into it. Look, I'm going to pull up my document here. We're going to do our recap. And then we'll get into our award ceremony and our memorial, how we do it for each and every season so far. I'll let you know what I think my favorite season is so far and my thoughts and opinions, favorite kill, favorite kiss, favorite scene, favorite episode, uh, et cetera. So with that out of the way and the nose hairs in my nose that are driving me effing bonkers, I pluck like four of these before the episode started. That's not even a joke. That's not even a joke. Look at this. This is live. I just got one. You're welcome. You got that for free, by the way. For free. Soft recap. Here's all of our major points, right? Let's kick off the season. Elaine is a vampire. End of season three. She's in the water. Stefan could have saved them both. Instead, he does what Elena fucking wants him to do. And he saves Matt first. So Elaine is a vampire. Damon's pissed at Matt because Matt's even alive in the first place. All of a sudden, Pastor Pete shows up. Pastor Pete walks around. He's getting all these people. He gives off the same energy little buddy from Game of Thrones gave off. The little, um, I forgot his name. He was the main, like, he was starting to build a cult around people, right? Kind of gave off those same vibes. I'm thinking to start off, like, this is our dude, right? This is the person who's going to cause the most troubles. It's not the case. Um, what? Oh, okay. I had no idea what I was just reading. I put Klaus Tyler. So Klaus inside of Tyler's body makes out with Caroline getting his little pseudo moment, which is kind of disgusting, but he's Klaus. Uh, Elena feeds on a cop and she becomes full vampire. She's down in this cellar. They have everybody round up. They're basically starving them to death, pumping in Vervain. And well, Elena finally feeds thanks to a little bit of help from Rebecca, a little bit of help from Stefan. Uh, she ends up feeding from Damon's hand, actually. She has a lot of trouble keeping food down. We don't know why. She keeps throwing up. She can't drink from a bag. So far, it seems like she can only drink from an actual human body. This new hunter shows up shaking hands with people, okay? This new guy, all right? Turns out he's wearing vervain gloves. His name's Connor. Connor is a vampire hunter, one of the five. And in the fourth episode, they call it the five, and that still pisses me off to this day. That's going to make me mad forever. Elena compels this new girl, April. We meet April. She's the daughter of... Um, did I not make a note of the biggest thing that happened in that first episode? Uh, April's the daughter of that pastor. The pastor actually blows up, right? A small house full of people. Blows them up. Just fucking kaboom. Kills them. Uh, Elena compels April to basically whatever the fuck the moment was. There's a whole memorial that they do. A beautiful scene. They have a whole memorial. Everybody kind of, you know, says, hey, this is to such and such, such and such. This is to Jenna. This is to Rick. And we have a beautiful moment of Rick and Damon. We get some ramen action. Damon goes over to his grave. Kind of goes on his little spiel. 
And Rick's ghost is there, and he's like, hey, I miss you too, buddy. Beautiful moment. Uh, listen, there's Hunter on the loose. There's a curfew now. Hunter gets wolf venom from Tyler's fucking skull, which was a gnarly scene. Made me feel very uncomfortable. He ends up infecting uh, Rebecca and Elena by putting a small dose into the, uh, they have a party. He infects some alcohol, right? Rebecca's okay from it. Elena, however, turns out she needs some of the Clemity Klaus blood. Damon and Klaus try to kill the hunter. And then we get information about one of the five. And Jeremy's the only person that can see Connor's tattoo. Connor has his whole tattoo going up his arm. And for some reason, little Jay Gilbert's the only person that can see the shit. Klaus ends up healing Elena. Uh, and we get, we get kind of hints that Tyler may have cheated on Caroline. Did he? Maybe not. We learned about the five. There's five vampire hunters. There's there's now a huge new thing, right? There is a potential for a cure. The hunters and this character named Silas, there's all these things in the works, and there potentially is a cure for vampirism, right? Vampirism. Uh, Stefan has to use Rebecca to get answers, and you know, she ends up getting fucking daggered. Damon and Elena get drunk, feeding during a fucking college party. They're dancing around, vibing out, you know, Project X type shit. They're just living their best life together. Uh, the hunter kind of kidnaps people into the one and only fucking Mystic Grill. This new hybrid Dean comes in and he gets wrecked. Wrecked. He gets destroyed. There's nail bombs and shit. Stefan has this whole plan and he kind of just leaves Elena and uh, Damon in the dark about it. Lo and behold, Jeremy gets fucking shot again. Stefan tries to escape with Connor, and as they're leaving through this little tunnel, he has to tell Damon the truth, but there's a cure, and he needs it for Elena, because Stefan the whole time has been kind of working with Klaus during all this. During the midst of this, right, they've been kind of keeping Elena away from killing people, because they know if she kills somebody, that's really going to set her over the edge. What happens? Stefan tells Connor to run away. Stefan's talking to Damon. He's like, hey, man, this is some serious shit. There's a cure out there. Elena kills her only real lead at the time on the cure. She kills Connor, her first effing kill. And um, now there's this thing called the Hunter's Curse, which she is haunted by Connor as he tries to execute his, his one last and only mission, which is to kill that vampire in which killed him. Uh, Jeremy all of a sudden sees a tattoo because guess what? Only hunters can see the tattoos. He's now one of the five. Meanwhile, Jeremy in the seat fights off a sneeze. <laughs> If Jeremy kills a vampire, um, is that right? If Jeremy kills a vampire, hallucinations stop. If Elena fucking just, I don't know. Ow! Never mind, never mind, never mind. I got, I got caught up with my notes here. Uh, Mr. Mayor tells Bonnie, wait, I said, I have Mr. Whatever tells Bonnie he can decipher the map. That is, that's Shane. I couldn't fucking remember his name the whole season. Uh, Bitchface and Haley mourn Chris. We get introduced to Haley. Uh, there's this whole dream of me and Haley just smooch, smooch. Wait, what? R Haley's in the show. Bless our hearts. Bless her. Hi, Haley. Um, Uh, uh, um, she, uh, Elena feels more of a connection to Damon as a vampire, right? And we don't know why. She just kind of has more of a connection with Damon, and she's starting to fall in love with Damon more so. So Stefan kind of has a moment where he has to break up with her. They have another Miss Mystic Falls dance in which April wins. Congratulations, April. We love that for you. I have Dr. Sam, a.k.a. Dr. Shane. Um, he's in on this whole thing with Haley, right? He's trying to give her answers about her family. Klaus had a moment with the hummingbird. That shit was pretty beautiful, actually. Uh... He tells the whole story about, you know, the, the hummingbird and whatever. Jeremy's now out to kill Elena because he's a fucking hunter. So Matt moves in to try to take care of him. That lasted all of negative three episodes because the next day they're out at the effing ranch, whatever, with the with the lake. Damon and Elena kiss, but lo and behold, while this kiss is happening, reading the comments, everybody's like, oh my God, Delena, it's happening. Kaka, kaka. While all that's going on, Caroline breaks it down that the reason any of this has happened is because Elena is sired to Damon. Much like Bitchface is sired to Klaus, Elena is sired to Damon. So whatever he says, you can only drink from a warm body. You can't drink from a bag. She is working on those emotions and playing off of what he is saying. Because, again, she's fucking sired. Uh, he tries to find a way to break the sire bond. 
introduce Charlotte. Poor Charlotte. She's been fucking counting bricks since the 1940s. Charlotte lasts in an episode. She counts bricks the whole thing. He ends up having to break it off with her. Basically, the only way to get around it is him saying, hey, go live your life. Don't think about me, etc. Damon agrees to tell her off, but at the end of the episode, Damon's just looking at Elena. Is he going to say it? What's happening? Cliffhanger, bro. Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger. Damon didn't tell her. Instead, they need to figure out a way to help Jeremy not kill Elena. Klaus shows Stefan the sword, uh, and he paints a snowflake. Is my alt really that lit, bro? Literal. Haley snaps Caroline's neck. I hated that. My beard is attached to the mic. <laughs> Klaus murders the hybrids with his sword. And then drowns Tyler's mother in one of the wildest fucking turn of events. Uh, so we had 12 people blow up in a house. 12 hybrids blew up. What's going on? What the fuck's happening in the show, right? April finds all the bodies and she finds Rebecca daggered, undaggers her. They're BFFs. Damon finally tells Elena off, but it really doesn't kind of it doesn't work that way, really. Caroline reveals to Stefan that Damon slept with her, right? Because Damon and Elena clap cheeks together. Now Stefan knows. Now there's more brother fucking hatred towards each other. It doesn't last that long. Rebecca traps everyone in the school, basically forcing Elena to tell Stefan her true emotions. Uh, Rebecca offers to mind why Stefan, and Stefan, like fucking Palpatine, he's just sitting there like, do it. Doesn't happen. Stefan and Rebecca join forces, and Jeremy and Matt headed out to the house, right? Uh, Klaus turns a whole bunch of people in a bar, okay? Sets it up for Jeremy to kill him so he can grow his mark, because Damon's been training him. Jeremy and Matt had to head back to the house in the middle of the night to kind of protect Matt, because he's the only real human in that situation. But all the next vampires, they hide. So they go back to the bar the next day. They're all dead because lo and behold, Jeremy's fucking Denver BFF's back, a.k.a. Cole. Cole's back in this bitch. Cole compels Damon to kill Jeremy. Damon tells Jeremy to kill him because he can't stop. So Rebecca threatens to kill Cole with the white oak steak and blah, 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 daggers and shit. None of that happens. Stefan ends up having to put Damon in the chamber of secrets to get him where he needs to be. And Stefan goes and hooks up with Rebecca. He's like, hey, you go and clap my girl's cheeks. I'm going to go clap your girl's cheeks. Congratulations. We've now clapped originals. Even though I think Stefan already did that back in the day, but I don't, I'm not a fucking, I'm not, no, I don't know. I'm not a time traveler. Nostradamus. One of those words. Elena tells Jeremy to kill Cole, which will, it, you know, the compulsion will end and his tattoo will come in fully. You know, it'll wipe out the whole bloodline, which is the whole reason that she held off on killing Rebecca was because it would stop. You know, she would wipe out all these innocent vampires, but now she's out for blood. Uh, at this point, I had a question. Is she getting is she getting darker or is she getting dumber? As the season goes on, the answer to that is the latter half, dumber. Ends up, this whole scene comes out, he's chasing around. Cole has Jeremy on, on the, the island of their kitchen. and He's like, you know what? I don't know which arm to cut off. I'm going to cut off both of them, bro. No hard feelings. Turns out, bing, bam, bop, uno, reverse. Jeremy kills Cole, completing his mark this point Stefan lures Rebecca to a dance <sighs> Rebecca and her dances you know he's trying to distract yada yada and she's like you know what you don't have to do this you want the dagger here it is but let, I'm, I'm on your side so we now have these teams basically Klaus is pissed his brother's dead he you know a view to a view to a kill he witnesses it happening and he he's warning the main group like I will fuck each and every one of you up they somehow get Shane out of jail that that is kind of he just kind of does it and they go to an island Jeremy gets kidnapped along the way. There's somebody saves his life. There's a bunch of mysterious shit going on. Uh, during all this, Klaus finds out that he can... Well, he didn't find out, but he, he can speak the language. Uh, there's only one cure. One single solitary cure. It's not for everybody. They think every vampire can take it. They were all going to fucking hold hands right off into the sunset together. Bing, bam, bop. There goes the Vampire Diaries, four seasons deep. Nope. One cure. Who is going to be the one? Uh, Galen's nursing school co comes up. Galen, Galen College of Nursing. It's one of those orders. Galen shows up, ties up Damon. They think uh, Galen was the one that saved Jeremy. He's not. There's another mystery person in play. Bonnie and Jeremy end up finding the cure. Shane gets his shit snapped up. Elena gets attacked by who else? Fucking Catherine. Of course it's Catherine. She's been gone for like a season and a half. Now she's back. So Kat steals the cure and offers up Jeremy to Silas, killing Jeremy Gilbert. Come to find out, this motherfucker's dead dead. You know why? Because now he's a hunter, and now he's supernatural, so the Gilbert ring doesn't protect him whatsoever. 
Galen's been working with Catherine and Haley because if anybody can manipulate you, it's Catherine. Haley could easily manipulate me, but we're not here to talk about that. Damon has Elena turn off her humanity, right? In a moment where she's freaking out, we think Damon's just about to be like, hey, everything's okay, blah, 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 sire, sire, sire. Jeremy's dead body's on the couch. It's the last time we see Dr. Phil. And instead, he tells her to turn it off. When she turns it off, she ends up burning the house down. And they walk out, and down goes the Gilbert house with Jeremy's body inside. We get introduced to Will, which is uh, Damon's friend for 20 seconds. Tyler's gone for good, so he leaves the house to Matt. Kudos. Uh, Damon takes Elena to New York. They're out there. She gets a new hairdo. We get all this information about how the whole time he was helping a five foot seven vampire run away from him. He was helping the person. He was helping Catherine, who he was looking for, run away from him with fake IDs. Damon hooks up with Lexi, turns on her, Uno reverse again, because he didn't really turn his emotions back on. He's just a sack of shit sometimes. Uh, Rebecca and Elena become kind of friends. They steal Damon's car. That was the whole thing. Elena's basically turning into Catherine at this point, right? And Catherine and Elijah are now friends with benefits, apparently. They have a whole thing. You never know what the fuck's going on. Uh, Silas shows up and stabs Klaus in the back with the white oak stake, except he fucking didn't. It was all a mind game. All the pain was fake, showing how powerful his manipulation can actually be. I have a note here. Elena's a bitch because she kills a waitress. Rest in peace. Jolene, we love you. Prom happens. Matt and Bonnie win. I think I actually said Bonnie and Bonnie in the video. Matt and Bonnie wins king and queen of the prom. You'd love to see it. Bonnie sees Jeremy, but it's Elias because he's a fuckboy. And then Elena tries to kill Bonnie. And Bonnie shut that shit down because this expression match is getting too powerful at this point. Now, Elena's in the Chamber of Secrets. Jeremy has more nose hairs growing. Detour to the originals. Episode 20. We get a whole thing of the originals in Nolens. We get all this shit. Klaus meets up with Marcel, who I remembered. Um, come to find out, Haley's fucking pregnant. I didn't know they were going to pull that trigger. They hooked up. I didn't know that was going to be a thing. I thought that was going to be something like in the middle of the originals that would happen. They kicked the shit off like that. And uh, have a beautiful moment with them talking together, him and Elijah. And Klaus at first kind of turned the baby away, but now he's just like, you know what? Every king needs an heir to the throne. Caroline snaps Elena's neck in one of my favorite moments. Uh, Rebecca Fout vows to help Matt with school. Um, Liz dies for a minute. Uno reverse. I got. I had half a tear come out. That shit was emotional. Um, Catherine releases Elena from her chamber of secrets. They had her in a fucking safe. Elena has this moment with Matt. Damon snaps Matthew's neck. In that moment, Elena's fucking emotions come back on. But the whole time, Matt had on the Gilbert ring. Beautiful. Beautiful. Bonnie ends up, right, she needs to drop the veil. The whole thing going on is Silas needs to take this cure. Because if he does, when he dies, he can be with his loved one instead of going to the supernatural purgatory. So the scary thing is if the veil's dropped, all the supernatural people come back. So in this episode, Bonnie drops the veil. Rick, Cole, Grams, Jeremy, Lexi, they all show up in beautiful moments individually. Bonnie ends up stopping Silas. Uh, Elena's, you know, trying to say goodbye to people. In the process, Bonnie is like, feels bad that Jeremy's dead. So she tries to do a spell to bring him back. Boom, she's dead. Bonnie's fucking dead. Bonnie's dead. All the dead peeps are back. Even Alexander fuckboy's back with his sword. Um, well, not his sword, but you get the point. They go through graduation. We just have another episode. They're graduating now. The bonus episode. Graduation. Bonnie's standing there deader and shit, talking to people. Uh, she never tells anybody she's dead. Damon gets shot with a werewolf bullet. Klaus saves him. And one of the first things in the show that really pissed me off is that we didn't actually get to see that scene. It just happened. They just cut to Damon being okay after him suffering again. There was no moment. There was no negotiation. There was no Klaus laughing about it. Nothing. He just did it. Um, lo and behold, Damon gets the girl finally. That's pretty much the gist of this season is Damon getting the girl. Stefan's not not happy. But he's not excited either. He's trying to figure out what he's going to do with his life now. Uh, Bonnie raises up the veil, and when she does so, Jeremy realizes that he can breathe, and he can no longer feel Bonnie's presence. Jeremy is now alive, and Bonnie is dead. Bitchface can come back to town. 
Matt gets Rebecca in a beautiful moment. All the dead people disappear. Elena forces Catherine to take the cure. They have this whole fight scene. Catherine's beating the dog shit. I love her. Elena takes the fucking cure out, pops it in her mouth. So now Elena, I'm sorry, now Catherine's going to be human. Elena's now Catherine and Catherine's now Elena is basically how I'm looking at it. Stefan gets thrown into a fucking lake, by the way, because it shows up and it's like, wait, Silas, I thought you were dead. Silas was like, no, bro. You're my shadow self. Stefan's apparently also a doppelganger. So now we have a new shadow Stefan as they throw Stefan into a safe into a fucking river. Into a river. He's just there. Stefan dead? I don't fucking know. Do can vampires drown in this reality? I don't know. I don't know. So Silas is now Stefan. Catherine is Elena. Elena is Catherine. Matt gets Rebecca. Damon gets Elena. Um, bitch face can come back and get with Caroline. We have all these things in motion. Bonnie is dead. The veil is dropped. We had a beautiful ramen moment, by the way, that I absolutely love. And that is season four. That's everything that happened in season four. Yeah, sure, Shane was a bigger part, and there's a couple things missed out, but none of that's really important. It was a damn good season, right? It was a pretty good season. My in memory, our memorial. Let's get it out of the way. Well, I didn't mention either. We also had to kill 12 witches so the triangle parts could form together so the veil could be dropped, right? There was also 12 witches that Caroline ended up killing. So in memory, we have the council, the 12 hybrids, the 12 witches, Nate, Dean, Connor the hunter, Chris, I had Kim and the other hybrids, Carol, Tyler's mother, Cole, Galen, Shane, Jeremy, but he's back, so not Jeremy. Will, Jolene, the waitress, Bonnie, and Stefan with a question mark. Rest in peace, season four deaths. Uh, if you weren't mentioned, I probably didn't give a shit. I also want to give an in memorial special one to Charlotte because she's been in New Orleans since the 40s counting fucking bricks waiting for Damon to come back. I hope that she lives a happy and healthy life. Truly. So, for the favorites for the season, right? Favorite episode. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. I have four things listed. I have four episodes listed for my favorite, and I'm going to give you my clear-cut winner. Episode 2, Memorial. Beautiful episode. Episode 9, O Come All Ye Faithful. Episode 20, The Originals, and Episode 23, Graduation. This, other than Season 1, this may be my favorite finale. This finale is fucking bonkers. The Originals is in its own category, so it's off on its own fucking amazing episode. I cannot wait to watch that show. Favorite episode is Come, O Come All Ye Faithful. Just kidding, it's Graduation. I love the O Come All Ye Faithful. I think it's a beautiful episode. It has my favorite moment, but... Graduation, the finale is my favorite episode of this whole effing season. It, it was it was a wild ride. A wild ride. Favorite scenes. Um, here's my here's my honorable mentions. The rooftop scene at the end of episode one with Stefan and um Elena talking to each other. It reminisced them being on the Ferris wheel in season two. Uh Eli talking to Klaus in the original episode. Just that monologue. Said, I will be your brother. <sighs> Shit had me hyped. Klaus talking to Camille about the painting was another beautiful scene because she describes exactly who Klaus is as a person. That scene was phenomenal. Um, the memorial where they all light the lanterns and lift them up. Beautiful scene. Uh, my runner-up for favorite scene is actually Rick coming back and him and Damon having that hug and that little slap right there. It was so good. My favorite scene um, in the whole thing, and this will actually double up, is Klaus killing his hybrids. Wicked. 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 If we take out the gore portion... The memorial slash Rick scene would be my favorite just because of the, the, the raw emotions in those scenes um, were pretty damn good. I almost cried in the memorial scene. It almost got me again. Favorite kiss? 
the first kiss between Damon and Elena when they were dancing. Uh, and I also have an honorable mention of Matt and Rebecca. Do you know why? Because I've wanted both of those characters to be so happy. And even if they just get it just in that moment, I think that's great. Damon is now a four-time kiss of the season winner. Damon and Elena back-to-back -back best kisses. Shout out. I think that's a three-time winner because he also one of them was kissing um, Caroline. Has every seen them four kissing, right, actually? Not Caroline, I'm sorry, Catherine, when he was bloody. I think they're four-time winners. I don't know if they're going to sweep or not. I'm just saying, pretty impressive. Favorite kill, honorable mentions, Connor shooting Dean in the fucking chest and blowing out his heart hole. Uh, Klaus... Killing, knocking a witch's head off, Kung Lao style, with the fucking graduation cap was wicked. Rick killing Galen when he came up and just snapped his neck and tossed his ass into the river. Lit. Elijah killing peeps in the alley to save uh, the witch. Best kill, 100%. It's not Klaus killing all the hybrids. While it was beautiful, it was him killing Kim at the end, slowly driving that fucking sword into her throat. Favorite character. Um, favorite character this season was Klaus. Rick is a runner-up because I'm a softy and I miss him. But uh, Klaus was my favorite character this entire season. We got more and more layers of him. Honestly, if Elijah had more screen time, I think Elijah would hands down be probably my favorite character so far. But Klaus and his emotional levels and the fact that he is this big bad person. But he wants to prove it to everybody. He wants to be king. He wants to be acknowledged as being all powerful. And that's the thing. So... Klaus, my favorite character so far. Uh, team Stefan or Team Damon. People ask me this in the Twitch stream all the time. I don't have a preference. I don't. I agree with both. I agree with what Rose said in season three that, you know, Klaus, I'm sorry, Klaus. Damon challenges Elena and Stefan is just like the white knight. His love is pure. Uh, I don't have a preference. I don't. I, the Sire storyline was interesting, right? I think my favorite storyline, we can throw in a new category, was probably. Um, the cure, obviously, of, of all of it. But the Sire storyline kind of takes away from Elena and Damon's overall relationship. It kind of makes it seem like the only reason that she was ever with Damon was because of that, which by the end of the season is not the case because she's no longer sired and she does choose Damon, which I think is beautiful. But leading up to that, it was kind of like, a, really? All right, well, she's going to get unsired and go back to Stefan. So we kind of had those feelings. I have no clue where season five is going to go my favorite season so far, I still can't decide. I really can't. I think season three was wickedly good. Um, I think two, actually, as much as I enjoyed it, may be my least favorite. Not saying it's bad by any means. I think two is at the bottom for me right now because I love season one so much of introducing all the characters. Season three and season four right now are neck and neck for my favorite season, though. Like, neck and neck. Four may take it because of how good the finale was, but they're they're like... They're like on the same playing field. So I don't have a favorite season just yet. An outright winner will wait. Season five, I guess going into it, I mean, I already listed it, where everybody's at in their situations, who has who, what's going on. Maybe we get some more Matt and Rebecca. Maybe they kind of ride off into the sunset for a while. Uh, we'll obviously get Bitch Face coming back to be with Caroline. We'll see how that progresses. Stefan's in a fucking chamber. He Stefan is literally in a safe in the bottom of an ocean. I have no clue if he's dead or not. Um... We have that to deal with. Like, that's the big thing now. Like, Stylus is still around, and he is Stefan. But Damon has Elena, and we'll see how that progresses. I really don't know where the story's going to go next. Obviously, at some point, they're going to find out Bonnie's dead, and Jeremy's back, and Elena has to process those emotions, and now Catherine's a human. So we're going to see what Season 5 has in, has in store for us. A lot of people, again, have said Season 5 is their favorite, as well as Season 6. So I feel like we're in a case where I feel like the next two seasons, 5 and 6, are going to be absolutely banging, and then we're going to get into 7 and 8, and it may start to dwindle out. Because people in chat sometimes, in, in Twitch streams, they come in, they're like, hey man, enjoy it. Because it kind of falls off a little bit. Most shows do. Some shows don't need to go as long as they do. I always say Breaking Bad is perfect, because Breaking Bad gave us five seasons, and it told its entire story. Game of Thrones had the potential to tell us its entire story in eight episodes, but... 
it didn't. So kind of sucks. It's kind of one of those things, but you know, what can we do about it? So hopefully it keeps continuing being good. Listen, we're halfway through the vampire diaries halfway through. We have four seasons left Four, four, and that's it. And then we're on to the originals is the thing. And again, if you guys didn't catch the finale or what I said, I'm watching the Vampire Diaries in full and then the originals. I appreciate you guys sending me the crossover episodes, how it bounces back and forth. That's just not the way I'm going to operate it. And uh, I appreciate all the love and support on Patreon. You guys getting to watch the full uncut episodes. I appreciate all the external support. People that's been buying t-shirts, all the people from the giveaway, uh, which I'm still waiting on two people. I'm still waiting on two of you. Yeah, if I don't have a response, I'll I'll, I'll call you. I'm going to call you guys out in the May update video. I will call you out. But uh, I think most of the orders are being shipped by this point. So thank you guys for hanging out during Season 4. And eventually I'm going to start Season 5. And you will get that episode tomorrow. That's all I got. Listen, me and Jerry's here. We enjoyed the season. We had a, we had a, hoot, and a, high, a hoot and a half, brother. Hey, I'm going to go ahead and head out. So as always, guys, thank you for the love and support. Thank you for recommending this show because so far I've loved it. I've put a couple friends onto it already. And uh, just as we go over 35 minutes here, I'm out. Links to everything, Patreon, Twitch stream, merch site, social media, in the description box down below. Playlist up on screen. Stay cute, stay hydrated, and I will catch you on the next one.